brake balance in Gran Turismo 7 is a little bit vague really and in this video I'm going to explore everything to help you understand how it works, what it does and how to be fast using brake balance. The explanation that Gran Turismo provides about brake balance is not particularly helpful. In fact, I think it's completely wrong. It suggests to use brake balance to balance the way the car brakes to match the weight distribution of the car. Now, I think that's completely backwards. But before we get on to all of that, first of all, you need to be able to adjust the brake balance in your car. Most of the race cars come with brake balance as a standard, uh, but a lot of the road cars, you have to install it as an aftermarket part. Scroll along to the racing section and down to the brake balance controller. It's only 1,500 credits, so thankfully it's pretty cheap when it comes to Gran Turismo currency. One thing to note, if you are playing sport mode, or any BOP or tuning fixed race, then the brake balance is not available to adjust. It is only available when tuning is enabled. On the setup sheet of your car, you can find it a little bit to the right. Uh, make sure the brake balance controller is enabled and you've got the range from minus five to plus five. And this is where the confusion starts. I'm gonna conduct a series of tests to truly figure out what minus five means, what plus five means and what zero means. All of my testing will be done with ABS turned off. This amplifies the feeling that the brake balance change makes and it becomes more visually understandable to see which brakes lock up first. The brake balance controller also allows you to adjust the brake balance on the fly using the MFD controls as shown on screen right now. The first test I'm going to do is a side view braking in a straight line at special stage route X. Brake balance all the way to the front, get on the brakes and you can see straight away the front wheels lock up first, the rear wheels barely lock up. All the way to the back on the brake balance, get on the brakes and the front wheels still lock up, the rear wheels start to lock up as well. Now this time I'm going to use the hand brake only, this is rear wheel braking only and as you can see the rear wheels lock up and the car spins out of control. Using brake balance zero, we're going to do the exact same thing again, getting on the brakes and the front wheels lock up and the rears just start to grab. So what exactly does that mean? Well, for sure, I can tell you straight away that having the brake balance set all the way to the rear, so plus five, is absolutely not all the way to the rear at all. It's most likely more like 55% front, 45% rear. The range of brake balance adjustment you have is just a fine amount of adjustment within the window of a normal racing car brake balance. Uh, typically, race cars will be about 60%, 65% fr brake bias to the front, uh, that can vary quite a bit, but you see a lot of F1 races where they'll adjust their brake balance on the fly and you see 62% is often a number that is on their dashboard. And again, in a lot of other racing sims, in the 60% range to the front is where you often find brake balance. So let's come back to this diagram here. 0% in indicates that it's the middle but i don't think it is at all i think minus five to the front is probably more like 75 percent front brake bias and as you dial back down to zero and down to plus five i think plus five is probably in the region of like 55 percent to the rear and let's try this one out now uh, in reality now brake balance all the way to the front on the setting and we're going to trail brake into turn one at suzuka and you can see the car just want to understeer on board view now you can see my steering input you can see my brake input as we get on the brakes and start to steer the car wants to understeer we're overloading the front tires that's causing the front tires to be over overcome with uh, the work they have to do and they start to understeer now brake balance to the rearward setting and you can, as you can see we get on the brakes we start to lose the rear under braking and in fact from in car view we're barely turning the steering wheel and the rear tires are now becoming overloaded the rear tires are doing much more work than they can deal with and it's breaking that traction circle one more time with rearward brake balance and you can see we're just starting to over rotate so as an overview of brake balance when it comes to the way the car drives on trail braking into the corner the further forward you put your brake balance the more understeer you'll have on corner entry. The more rearward you have your brake balance, the more oversteer you'll have on corner entry. So that's gonna help you trying to tune the brake balance to make sure you get the car to drive the way you want it to drive. But the brake balance can also be useful in many other ways, and that includes tire wear in this example on screen right now. We're coming to the end of a long race with reasonably high tire wear. And if we look at my tires, they're wearing quite evenly, which is working pretty good. If I was to put the brake balance to the front, 
this would overwork the front tires and cause more front tire wear if i was setting the brake balance to the rear that would overwork the rear tires and cause more rear tire wear so if you've got a car that naturally wears out its front tires for example a front wheel drive or a four wheel drive car you're probably more likely to want a rear would brake bias setup but if you've got a car that wears out the rear tires quite aggressively like a mid-engine rear wheel drive car then look to set your uh, brake balance to the front to balance out that tire wear and this actually works quite well so a, a mid-engine rear wheel drive car like this lamborghini huracan for example is really wild on corner entry it wants to over rotate so sending that brake balance to the front is going to help to kill some of that oversteer on corner entry and then for example you've got the front wheel drive rcz group 4 car you're going to want the brake balance mostly to the rear in this car because the car is very understeery by nature certainly on the brakes you want to uh, move the brake balance rearwards loosen up that rear end on corner entry and that should help you out a lot which is actually completely opposite to gran turismo's original explanation saying you should balance the brake balance to match the weight distribution of the car opposite i think i think that's completely wrong if you want to further your understanding of brake balance in gran turismo 7 then also watch my video on screen right now about the traction circle consider every single tire on the car to have its own traction circle and when you're moving the brake balance forwards and backwards you are putting more load onto each tire if you have enjoyed this video and don't forget to smash that like button consider subscribing if you haven't already thank you very much for watching and we'll catch you in the next one